This 38 year old gentleman's got um, uh, congenital heart disease and he has quite a complex collection of lesions um, which we'll, we'll, we'll come to uh, with their appropriate physical signs. Um, he was relatively well when he was a child but gradually got more breathless and was noted to, to be a little bit blue later on in life. And his main complaints now are palpitations and breathlessness. And um, when you examine the patient, his first thing to notice is looking at his hands. Um, you can see that the fingers are a little bit blue, and he has obvious clubbing of the fingers as well. And this is, of course, very common in people with cyanotic congenital heart disease. Also, his lips are a little bit on the blue side. And can you please put your tongue out? That's it. It's, it's a little blue, but not, nothing very major. So it's just slightly cyanotic. And his cheeks are a little bit blue as well. His pulse is, is irregular, irregularly irregular. So he's in atrial fibrillation. And the rate is about 80 per minute. And feel the carotid for the volume and the character. The volume is quite normal, and the character, that is the waveform, is also quite normal. So uh, that rules out severe aortic stenosis or aortic regurgitation. When we look at the JVP, you can see here quite obviously venous pulsations. You can see it comes up to about here. And if I just press gently here, you can see it gets much more obvious and now you can see some V waves appearing as well. So the uh, venous pressure is a bit raised about there. If we move on to examine the precordium, here some people with congenital heart disease have a slight asymmetry of the chest with a, a slight increased bulging of the left side of the chest due to the enlarged right ventricle. His apex beat is about here. Apex is defined as the most lateral and inferior position you can feel the heart. So it's clearly displaced almost to the anterior auxiliary line and the uh, character of the apex is a little bit stronger than normal. And then if we move across here he's got evidence of right ventricular hypertrophy. I can feel my hand being pushed up and down by the right ventricle underneath and he's also obviously got a thrill here, which you can feel in this area here. And if we feel up here, we can also feel another thrill up here in the pulmonary area. So he's got a thrill in this area here, which is a typically, associated, uh, typically due to a ventricular septal defect. And another thrill up here very easily palpable, just in this area here, which is a pulmonary artery area. So we already know now, just from palpation, that he's likely to have a VSD and pulmonary stenosis. And you can feel this through very nicely just here. And there's no aortic thrill. And then on auscultation, we know what pretty much what we're going to hear. As expected, a very loud pan-systolic murmur here at the lower left stern ledge. And then we move up to the pulmonary area. can hear another rather more ejection systolic murmur. And in the mitral area, you can just hear the radiation from the loud VSD. Try and listen to the second heart sound to listen for fixed splitting. The second heart sound is, is a little bit widely split. And there is some suggestion that it may be almost fixed. There's no separate aortic murmur. 
Hold your breath. That's it. Good. This side. So in summary, he, he's got signs of central cyanosis with blue fingers and blue lips and, and, some, uh, and some clubbing. It's typical of cyanotic congenital heart disease. He's got atrial fibrillation. He has got a raised JVP, suggesting some uh, right ventricular failure. And he's got the murmurs of a ventricular septal defect and pulmonary stenosis. He has actually been put on oxygen on the ward, but um, I'm not sure what difference this will make because this is a, an extra pulmonary shunt, so the shunt outside the lungs. Um, there may be some, the oxygen may get dissolved, but uh, it probably won't make much difference to his cyanosis.